Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm with Live Better Hearing. Today I'd like to show you how to read your hearing test. It's recorded on an audiogram that looks like this, and it's got a lot of components. Let's go over what everything means. So you can see there's a zero mark here. On this graph, zero means that you have normal hearing. And so you can see there's a line spanning all the way across. Your marks on the zero line mean that you have normal hearing across all the different frequencies. Frequencies are almost like notes that range from low pitch on this graph to high pitch. So 125 hertz is very low pitch and 8000 hertz is high pitch. So the louder the sound had to be for you to be able to hear it, the lower on the chart your response is. And they're recorded in two colors. Red represents right side and blue represents left side. So you can see if this were printed in black and white, you'd still be able to tell which one's which because the X's represent the left side and the O's represent the right side. And as you go across, you can see that it's not the same at each frequency because only one frequency is going to be tested in each year at a time. On this particular audiogram, they've placed the speech banana, which is this gray section, and it shows where phonemes occur. And the phoneme that occurs in that frequency range is printed in that range. So for example, the M sound, like M, is low frequency. And so you can see that it falls somewhere between 250 and 500 hertz. But if you go over to the higher frequencies, the th sound represented with th is printed on this audiogram. So it can just show you where the phonemes occur, and phonemes are the smallest snippets of sound that combine to form words. So this graph is your audiogram, and the same thing is represented down here, just the numerical values. So if you see this is the left side and then over here this is the right side and there's AC. So AC is air conduction and that's how we're hearing normally without anything on our ears. Air waves are passing through the air, it's displacing the air and then it's hitting our eardrum. It's going to our middle ear, it's going to our inner ear. But bone conduction is where we have a headband that vibrates our um, skull, our head, and it's vibrating our bone, our inner ear only. So these are the two different tests. One is done with an insert headphone, air conduction, and the other is done with um, a bone oscillator, a headband. And you don't really feel it too much unless you go to a very low frequency, but you hear it directly to your inner ear, even if nothing were in your ear. Uh, so air conduction test and bone conduction test. So the purpose of doing those two tests is to see if the inner ear hears better than testing everything. Because if the inner ear hear, heard better than testing everything, air conduction, that means that maybe you have earwax blocking your hearing. Or maybe you have a middle ear infection where there's fluid in your middle ear and sound is not being transmitted to your inner ear. So those two responses should be relatively the same. So air conduction responses are recorded with the O's for right side and the X's for left side. And you can see a legend is always gonna be printed on the audiogram. And then it's represented with these little bracket marks if it's bone conduction. And those should line up to about the same as each other. So they should be either on top of each other or within 10 decibels. So each one of these, you can see 10 decibels, 0 to 10, 10 to 20. These are the increments. So the air conduction responses, testing everything, and bone conduction responses should be about the same. If they're not, then there might be cause for a medical referral. So you can see air conduction responses is how we tested speech reception threshold, SRT. So in the left ear and the right ear. And the purpose of this test is to see what's the softest volume you can uh, have played to you in order to make out a word about 50% of the time. 
And for these tests, there are specific word lists that we use. So your speech reception threshold, your ability to make out words, should be about the same as the volume it takes to stimulate these low frequencies, 250, 500, and 1,000. So the average of those frequencies should be about what it takes for you to make out a word. But if we increase the volume, and now we're no longer testing for your hearing sensitivity, but we're testing for your word comprehension, we want to see what is in an ideal circumstance with no noise and the volume loud, how well can you comprehend what you hear? So WR stands for word recognition. And so someone with the same hearing sensitivity could have a different word recognition just based on how they lost their hearing or based on how long it's been since they've actually heard and uh, not worn hearing aids. So your hearing sensitivity is uh, not part of this test. We increase the volume to rule that part out, out and we're only testing for your comprehension of the words. Then we test this thing, quick speech and noise test. So we test to see how well you can hear in the presence of noise. And so it's a list of um, phrases that you repeat. And as we go, there's more and more noise. And the signal to noise ratio is recorded in the end. And that tells us how much louder the signal had to be above the noise for you to make out the signal. And so 5.5 means that the signal had to be 5.5 decibels louder than the noise in order for you to make out the signal. 